So let's consider some examples of using dimensional analysis. So for instance, this test question, where we have an object of mass m moving with a speed v in a circle of radius r, we want to know what the centripetal force is on the object. So if we don't know how to do this, well, what we can do is we can use dimensional analysis to figure this out. What we want to do is we want to combine the mass, the speed, and the radius to get something with units of force. So we make a generic guess. We say the centripetal force is mass to some power, speed to some power, and radius to some power, where these quantities are a, b, and c are unknown. And our goal is to find these quantities a, b, and c by matching dimensions on both sides of this equation. And that's how we'll figure things out. So let's say we forgot what the units of force were. So if we forgot what the units of force were even to start, we'll recall F equal to ma and tells us the units of force are units of uh, mass times units of length over units of time squared. So we can rewrite our generic guess above in this way, where the dimensions are two powers a, b, and c. And what we want to do is we want to mass, match the mass dimensions on both sides. So for instance, if we match mass dimensions, we find a is equal to 1. If we match time dimensions, we find that the only way that could work is if b was equal to 2. And if we match length dimensions, we find the only way that that can work is if b plus c is equal to 1. Using the fact that we know b is 2, that tells us that this quantity c is negative 1. So we can rewrite our expression for the centripetal force as mass to the power 1, speed to the power 2, radius to the minus 1, or mv squared over r, which looks awfully familiar. Let's consider another example where we have a mass m at the end of a long strength l in a gravitational field g hanging like a pendulum, and we want to know the period t of the oscillating pendulum. So again, we can solve this problem using dimensional analysis and making a guess. So we say the period is mass to the power a, length to the power b, gravitational acceleration to the power c, and we figure out a, b, and c by matching dimensions on both sides of the equation. And so we can rewrite our dimensional analysis problem like this. And again, we can match dimensions. So if we match mass dimensions, we find the only way for that to work is if a is equal to 0. Matching time dimensions, the only way that this can work is if the quantity c is negative 1 half. And matching length dimensions, the only way this can work is if the combinations of b plus c are actually equal to 0. Using the fact that we know c is 1 half, this tells us that b has to be positive 1 half. So we can rewrite now our expression for the period as mass to the power 0, length to the 1 half, gravitational acceleration to the minus 1 half, or period goes as length over gravitational acceleration square rooted. There's an important famous result, which is that the period is independent of the mass, and also that the period depends on the square root of the length. And this is a particularly famous result that's due to Galileo. Now, how does this compare with the actual answer of the period of a pendulum? So if you recall, the actual period of a pendulum is 2 pi times the square root of the length over the gravitational acceleration. And notice we couldn't get that factor of 2 pi from dimensional analysis. And this is true in general. Dimensional analysis cannot get us these numerical factors.